You ever feel like someone's watching you and you're not really aware of it, of their presence? Hi, Badoo. Mask is staring at you. Well, that solves that mystery. Hey, you. Get out of my way for the honey tree. Listen, if you don't mind, I'd like to have a battle with your Pokemon. Well, at least they asked nicely? <gasps> Yennefer? <gasps> oh my gosh, you got an uwu face. Well, maybe not anymore. It's a selective uwu face. Clefa! Maybe she also has an Iggly buff? That's another Pokemon, baby Pokemon I could think she'd possibly have. But I don't remember if Jigglypuff is even in Sinnoh nat natively. Dang it. There we go. Break out of that confuge. Another Badoo, because of course there's another one. Man, I don't know, Wukong? Another baby dead. Ooh, woo. What? Mask is evolving. It's time. Finally, we have a Roselia. Roselia raised on clean drinking water are known to grow vividly covered, colored flowers. Not even covered flowers. Poison Sting. Our first poison move. It's not going to be good, but at least it's a poison move. Hmm. That's interesting, by the way. Depending on how fast you tab up and down on these, uh, on these things, the sound effect only sometimes plays. Like, if you're quick enough, it will never play more than once. But if you take your time between them... Oh no, it just stopped out right this time. Okay, interesting. Actually, all the sound effects just stopped working then. I don't know if that was an intentional thing or what. How you doing there, Roselia? Oh. Here it comes. Man, it, it runs fast. It can't really get a leg up on uh, catching up with me, though, because it keeps getting stopped by trainers. Hi, hi, I'm a Pokemon. If you say so, kid. Poke kid. I wonder what Pokemon she uses. A Pikachu? Who would have guessed? And a female one at that? Who would have guessed? Theft. Man, it's like Pikachu freaking sucks. I'm so angry. Maybe get better Pokemon? Oh yeah, I went there. Let's walk together with Basque for a bit. Might be a bad route to have swapped into it, but... 
Oh, if we have a statue from the underground, he gives us star stickers. Very cool. Is there anything down here? Quickly! To the dowsing machine. Oh, uh, looks like there was, or is. Oh, there it is. Oh, I can see it now. Um, it's down and to the left a little bit. Here? Okay, weird. I would think it'd be in that pit over there, but evidently not. Very curious, but I'm also scared. Well, I'll go up there for you and you can give me some stickers. I appreciate that they're filling this route up with random NPCs to give you stickers, because it adds to the, um, I guess the vibe of the, the route. There are plenty of NPCs already here in the original game, but the addition of yet more bees, I mean NPCs, uh, is kind of nice. Also, that was a very fun throwing animation. Yeehaw, boys! Try and take down my beaver army! She has a Bidoof, who would have guessed? Well, another one down, and another one down, and another one bites the Bidoof. I haven't seen Wukong fight in a little bit. Punch it. Put it out of its misery. Yet another doof. And now it no longer has buck teeth. In fact, it has no teeth whatsoever. That mock punch knocked all of them out. Howdy! Fancy folks like you have fancy Pokemon too, it looks like. Those look like brand new animations, which I appreciate. Cherubi, no! Okay, he's back. Okay, let's have another chance at this Staravia. I think this is a female Staravia because of that light patch on its forehead. Yeah. It's a little bit smaller and rounder if it's a female. And if it's a little bit wider and uh, covers most of its forehead, then it is a male Staravia. Uh, ball. Let's try that again. Well, ball. Come on, you're at red health. Come on. Well, I have to bring out the rose by any other name, it's still mask. God. I don't know why whenever it goes right over to Mask, my right stick decides, okay, you're ever so slightly pushing right, so I'm just going to look at its moves. You really want to know Mask's moves, right? Paralysize it, please.
Of all things to give me trouble when catching it, it's a bird. I can understand the giant mantis, but the bird? There we go. He's a bird. He's sitting down for once because that's how his sprite was in Diamond and Pearl. They fly around forests and fields in search of bug Pokemon, moving together in huge flocks. Cut it down, Bidoof. Destroy it. Steel Wing. Could be good for anything on my team that has wings, including Murkrow. And actually, mostly just Murkrow. I think Krikatoon might be able to learn it, but... Uh, Snarl, Sleep Tuck, Full Switch. Yeah, no one can learn that. Steel Wing. Yeah, only Gank can learn it. It's only 90 accuracy, but a Steel-type move with, uh... With... 70 power, not too shabby. Um, I think I'll get rid of Nightshade. I haven't used Haze much, but I feel like it will come in handy at certain points. Nightshade is only so useful, you know? Welcome to the Lost Tower. No one could find it, so... Uh, like, in a crowd, that is. So they decided, yeah, it's probably lost. It's lost to time, or just can't be found. Its father is time. Th this is like a bevy of jokes I could be making here, but my brain is not wanting to come up with any of them. It's like, yeah, father time, uh, being lost, being found... Uh, lack of a parental figure. Stuff like that. Also, yeah, I'm a ghost. Boo. What do you think? Am I spooky? Ghost skunk! Save me from the ghosts! Shellos. Yeah, let's get in Basque. Since we're on the east side of Sinnoh now, this should be the East Sea Shellos. Nope, that's still West Sea. I guess this kid came from the West? I have one of them. Hey, you're no ghost. And I ain't, I ain't afraid of me. An oval stone. Despite the name, the word stone being in its name, it is not an evolutionary stone in the traditional aspect. However, when a certain Pokemon holds that oval stone, and it has enough happiness, it will evolve. Ever since, I've never forgotten their faces. I'm going to destroy any and all Team Galactic members. Roughneck Kirby! With Cleffa, that makes too much sense. I like to imagine Roughneck Kirby is actually a really doting father to this Cleffa. Or at least a trainer to this Cleffa. Like, he cares about it so deeply, and if anything bad happened to it, he would... First, break down into tears, and second, insert second thing here. I think that's also a new animation that he just did. Boo is a ghost. Unfortunately, now that I've gotten rid of Nightshade, 
Uh, anything Gank does, I think, will knock out this Ghastly. Yep. So maybe I should have something else out front. And a revive. That will revive any fainted Pokemon to half health. I can't explain it. Being here compels me to battle. Some ghost is possessing me, my kid, and my Pokeballs. Oh, I appreciate. Oh, I really appreciate that. Even the kid mimics his dad throwing a Pokeball. That's great. Well. So the kid is Pichu and the dad is Pikachu? Is that the implication here? Weird flex. You don't need to use a priority move to outspeed a paralyzed thing. And another baby. Okay, never mind. Sometimes you do need something uh, with priority in order to uh, get past a paralyzed thing. Because I'm still outspeeding this Pichu. There we go. What was I just doing? Maybe the kid was what was possessing him. That kid's one hell of a persuasive. I was gonna say gentleman. That's not the case. Not even persuasive, he's manipulative. That's what that kid is. Need to shake off my sorrow. Please battle with me. My Pokemon just died. Please, will you engage in a fight with me? That figures she has a bond slot. Oh no, not our falling rock from the ceiling. And now the floor upstairs is gonna have a hole in it. My sorrow has deepened. Alright, ranch hands, fight me. Makes no difference to me. More Elite Beat Agents references, I can't believe it. I'm thinking... Slash on the Ponyta. Brick Break, I think, does a little bit more damage. And Grass Knot on the Buizel. Bodied. Oh no, I'm getting bodied. Maestro's a little worried that it wouldn't be able to battle well. Don't you worry, Maestro. You're doing fine. See, I was worried that uh, Ponyta would be faster than either one of the Pokemon on the field and would knock out Roselia as a result. Well, aren't you the lively one? Got a lot of giddy up and going, you. Howdy. Yeehaw.
Low sweep could be a good move to have on somebody. Probably Monferno. But I don't want to get rid of any of his attacks. Oh, look at this young couple. They're so in love. And then they break up the next day because of what's about to happen. It's a sad tale, but unfortunately true. Uh, Brick Break, yeah, 75. Slash is only 70. We'll use Stun Spore on Mistress. Okay. My feelings. No, we still in there. Okay, uh, we'll just finish off that Murkrow right quick, and we're just gonna gonna not worry about Roselia about to be fainted. Roselia being about to faint, more accurately. Once again, my brain does not want to function today, so syntax kind of out the window. Grammatical function also out the window. The only move we can hit Mischievous with from Cricketune is Fury Cutter. But Gank, he's about to send that ghost to another dimension. If he can kill something twice over, Gank just did it, see? Oh, so hollow. Oh, jeez, that's a downer. Let me make your journey out of this place less frightening. Take this. It's a bag of flour. Ma'am, what is the point of this? It's a bag of flour. Lost Tower is where the spirits of departed Pokemon are put to rest. Those that enjoyed long lives, those whose times were cut short, all departed Pokemon shall f find solace here. It's good to you, a good of you to have visited. Here, take these technical machines. These should be the TM for strength. Yep. You use that hidden move strength in the field. I've forgotten where exactly, but you must visit a Pokemon gym. Alright, we're done here, but we still haven't caught a Ghastly, so I'm gonna hang around here for a little bit longer. Or at least take the long way. Hope we can find a gas. There he is. We're not gonna do any damage whatsoever to him. Never mind. You know, I thought that Bug was resisted by both Ghost and Poison, but the fact that it did that much damage off of a critical hit implies that it that it's only resisted by Poison? I don't know. I don't know. Now my Bug is asleep. Well, um, maybe I'll just wait for it to faint in order for me to use Stun Spore on it. If it just keeps breaking out of Pokeballs, which it does happen to do. And go figure, uh, finally we have a Pokemon who, when they fall asleep, actually closes their eyes. That's a critical capture. I was starting to worry that those are, weren't in the game. Critical Capture is a newish feature introduced in um, Gen 7? 6, maybe. Basically, at random, your trainer's thrown Pokeball will have a very, very high chance of catching a Pokemon. It's never guaranteed, but it does usually end up working. This Pokemon's body is 95% made up of gases. The Pokemon can be blown away with strong gusts, by strong gusts of wind. All right, and we're done here. I guess I'll just use an escape rope if possible. If not, then I'll just use a repel. 
Ui! Honey, I'm home! Look at these two rapscallions just running around having fun in the fields. And now we have made it to Salacion Town. Or Salacion Town? I've always said Salacion. Uh, that Lost Tower, by the way, is a location to find Murkrow if you never caught one in the uh, Eternal Forest. And I believe Mr. Vish shows up there in Pearl as well. Oh, welcome. You saw the notice outside about us hiring, right? No, I just kind of walked in. Is that a Pokedex there? Then you must know for us, Rowan. You're just the Pokemon searching expert we've been looking for. I want you to bring me a Chingling. You must bring it today or we're not going to be able to run our main article. It has to be today before the date rolls over. So, this guy will ask for a random Pokemon... Uh, doesn't have to be one that you've caught, but he'll ask for a random Pokemon each day, and if you show it to him, he'll give you something. I don't know if it differs between this version and the older versions. You can write a great article. You get netballs. Yeah, he, he gives you different Pokeballs each time you give him a, uh, a Pokemon he's looking for. Alright, and now that we're here at Salacion as well, I want to check out the shop, see what new Pokeballs they have. If they have Great Balls, I'm buying a heck of those. A heck of a lot of those. They do not. But they do have Dusk Balls. Those are handy. Hmm. Yeah, I'm good otherwise. Every Sunday, I visit the Lost Tower. Alright, thanks. Here we have the Pokemon Daycare, with a bunch of Baneri running around, also a patch of Risu. How you doing, sir? Whoop. Basque seems very happy. Alright. Now to introduce you all to breeding. You can take, up to two, take care of up to two Pokemon for you. In the old games, if you left Pokemon alone here in the uh, the daycare as you just went about your business, they would level up passively. But the main appeal of uh, breeding Pokemon is to pass down uh, moves from either the father or the mother to the offspring that they wouldn't normally be able to acquire. And also, you can breed down the statistics, effort value. sorry, not the effort values, the individual values, um, natures, all that kind of stuff to the offspring in order to create your optimum, optimal, even, uh, Pokemon. So if we view our stats here, we can see which Pokemon are male and female. Uh, in order to reproduce, obviously you need to have a female Pokemon and a male Pokemon uh, breed together. And they also need to be part of the same egg group. It's not explicitly stated in-game what each Pokemon's egg group is, but you just kind of have to know. Like, I think there's a, a group for Field, and Buneary falls into the Field category. And I believe Luxio also does. So if we were to put Buneary and uh, Luxio together, they might end up creating an egg. We'll be able to check their affinity towards one another, I believe by checking with the man right here. They don't seem to like each other very much. Okay, so it's po it's likely then that they are not going to create an egg. But we can run around for a bit, come back to him, and if his stance, if his pose has changed to be looking to the side, then there's actually an egg there for us. Just gonna pick up these berries right quick. And I'm also going to show you something very handy about this town, or at least this town's layout. If you have the bike, and you head up here, and then just bike up and down it, you're going to have a very straight path 
up and down, and all you need to do in order to hatch eggs is just keep repeating this path over and over. You can even go up there if you want to. But I haven't fought the trainers up there. And actually, it does look like we have an egg. Hello, sir. We were surprised your Pokemon was holding an egg. We don't know how it got there, but your Pokemon had it. You do want it, don't you? We'll take the egg. What will hatch from this egg? Only time will tell. We're actually just going to send it to a box, because we know, I know, it's a Baneary. Because uh, Baneary, the female, mated with the with a male, the species of the offspring will be that of the females. The only thing passed down from the father will be moves. IVs, that is individual values, will be passed down uh, between both parents. And nature can also be passed down if the parent in question is holding a, an Everstone. So if you really want to game the uh, the offspring, then you can do that. If you want to pass down more IVs from the parents, one of the parents can be holding a um, Destiny Knot. That's the item. And uh, instead of having two IVs from either parent uh, being passed down to the child, uh, four IVs from both parents will be passed down instead. It might sound a bit complicated to new players about breeding, but the long and short of it is, if you breed a male Pokemon with a female Pokemon, and they're both part of the same egg group, you're probably just going to get a baby Pokemon of the female. If you want to experiment with movesets, as far as, like, what the, uh what the baby could possibly know, then feel free to experiment with uh, different movesets on the father and pass them down through the mother. Also, here we have a bee barrel. This is Bidoof's evolution. It is now normal water type. I was expecting that to not KO, so that's my bad. But now we know we can find a bee barrel out here in the grass. Wukong wants to learn Torment. That is a move that prevents the target Pokemon from using the same move twice in a row. It can be pretty fun to use that, but for now I'm gonna not take it. I like the idea of Taunt because it means I can stop any any non-attacking move from coming out as long as I know it's coming. Alright, round two against one of you. I believe the gender difference for B Barrel and Bidoof is the size of their tail. With Bidoof, it's it's definitely their tail. Uh, the stubbier the back end of the tuft, the uh, it, like that means it's female. I'm pretty sure that's the the gender difference. Either way, that's B Barrel. Look at it sit. It makes its nest by damming streams with bark and mud. It is known as an industrious worker. I know I've never called it the industrious worker Pokemon, but who knows? Maybe it is actually. Alright, this can be a little tricky to get right. There we go. You got Calcium. Calcium will up a Pokemon's uh, special attack effort values. Also, Perish. I'm used to B-Barrel being pretty defensive. That's why I thought Brick Break wouldn't knock it out. And then it occurred to me, hang on. I'm using a level 29 physical attacker right now. Maybe that's why it fainted. Uh, uh, let me through. Let me through. There we go. Hello? My son just loves those nearby ruins. If you don't mind, can you show him the Pokemon you catch in the ruins? So the ruins, as she mentioned, uh, those are off to the right. And I do want to visit that other house real quick. 
Location, 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 they sometimes say. They don't ever mention that the location is almost impossible to get to. Because these slopes, no one can seem to climb up them. There's always been a lot of Pokemon here, even in the olden days. They say there were big Pokemon ranches around these parts. Pokemon has a careful nature. Did you know that Pokemon's nature determines how it will grow? In case you're new to nature, here's a quick explanation. When you go into your Pokemon summary, and it says, this Pokemon is pretty blank by nature. If you head over to the right, you can see which stat is going to be improved better. Uh, oh, sorry, which is going to grow better, and which one is going to grow weaker. So in this case, careful nature means that a Pokemon will gain increased special defense compared to usual, and will have less special attack. Roselia is calm, so it'll increase special defense and lower attack. Gank has a neutral nature called Hardy. Basque will increase its attack and lower its special defense, as in it's naughty. Wukong, special attack up, defense down, that's mild. The Egg, we still don't know what will hatch from it. It doesn't seem close to hatching. We're going to have to keep that on our team for a while. Or, alternatively, if we, wanna, if we want to take the time, we can bike up and down this route just over and over. I won't spend too long doing this. I'm just going to go make a couple of laps. See if we can get at least an update to the uh, description of the egg. Okay, that's one lap. And back up we go. And that's two. How are we doing on that description? Nope. No dice. Okay, well, that'll do it for now. Next time we will explore the, explore the ruins of Salacion Town.